Don't care, boring, not about me. Still not about me. Ugh. Oh, wait, what is this nonsense? We are so proud that by the end of this month, everything in confetti will be recyclable. All non-recyclable items, blip, 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 on the curb, blah, 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 end of the week. Ugh. Thank you for helping make confetti the eco-friendliest. Ugh. More like eco-lamest. There's no way I'm getting rid of my shiny, potentially toxic <laughs> treasures. Oh, this has Cammy written all over it. It's so dull and plain and uh, crinkly. Uh, well, guess what, Cammy? Your do-gooder dreams are about to get crushed. Ow! What the? Grand opening today. Non-Natural Museum of Confetti History, Queen Frivol Esteem Museum Director? Are you kidding me? Ugh! Wow! I can't believe Queen Frivol opens her own museum. How did she find the time in between collecting all that stuff for her trash pile? Dev, it's not a real museum. She's doing it to get out of recycling her junk. I pretended to start a recycling program and put the flyer in her mailbox so she'd finally have to get rid of her stuff. Frivol is ruining confetti with her lazy, superficial ways, and this non-museum is not happening, that cheater. But if you made up a fake recycling program, isn't that just as bad as making a fake muse? I can see by your face that it is not the same at all. Queen Frivol is not going to get away with it, and I know just how to stop her. Well, not the how, but definitely the who. I'm making Jennifer hair a scarf. Just all of a sudden, boom, fashion inspiration hits. It's like that sometimes. Do ferrets need scarves? Huh, they didn't mention it at the shelter when I adopted her. Reese believes that every living creature deserves to be accessorized. Hey Jax, is there any more glow-in-the-dark filament for the 3D printer? My solar system project could use some bling. Boom, fashion inspiration hits again. Jennifer's scarf can glow in the dark. Where do all these ideas keep coming from? I might have a guess. Hmm, glow in the dark should be next to googly eyes if I alphabetized correctly. We are definitely running low on supplies. Hopefully there's money left in this month's budget to get more. Kaylee, what's up with your backpack? Wait, did Jennifer get in there? Shh, Reese, it's the confetti book. I think Cammy is trying to tell us something. We have to get out of here. Hey, Jax, um, we'll be back in a bit. Kaylee's having a real craving for, uh, uh, anchovies. Kaylee, Reese, you have to help us. Queen Frivol is trying to turn confetti into a big heap of plastic trash. She's pretending her palace is a museum so she doesn't have to recycle her junk and the pile keeps getting bigger. It's so high, it's about to topple over and spread trash all over the forest, pollute the lakes, all the poor animals. Don't worry, Cammy. If Queen Frivol is as shallow as I think she is, I have a pretty good idea how we can stop her. Just give us a few hours and we'll meet you at the museum. Wink, wink. Reese, I've got a stellar idea. Come on. Step right up and see the treasures of confetti for the first time ever. Uh, 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 no photos, no sneezing, no touching. Oh, these artifacts are priceless. Queen Frivol is a snake. Her museum is a fake. Spending money here is a big mistake. <laughs> Queen Frivol, esteemed director of the non-natural Museum of Confetti History, I presume. I don't care how weird you look, you still need to buy a ticket. We are art collectors from the ringed planet Saturn. We heard about your incredible museum and are prepared to pay any price to purchase everything in your junk pile, I mean collection. Please, you couldn't begin to afford one thing in my... My, 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 what is this? <gasps> no, surely those can't be. That's right, Saturnians, the most valuable form of currency in our galaxy. You would be the wealthiest woman in confetti if you just had one of these million dollar orbs. We are prepared to give you... Ten! I require ten Saturnians, and not one less. Think of all the new useless, environmentally unfriendly stuff we can buy with that. <gasps> Fools. You drive a hard bargain, but it's a deal. Dev, Cammy, or whatever your names are. 
Just guessing, since I've never seen you before. Please help us pack up these exquisite treasures. You can start with that giant sphere of doom up there. Supreme Leader Jax will be very excited about this collection. You know what they say, one queen's trash is someone else's treasure. Can you believe this? It was all in the loading dock when I came in this morning. We have supplies for making stuff for the next decade. I have a few out of this world ideas already. some devices you use every day that work by sending radio waves. Uh, a radio? TV and Wi-Fi too, I think. Yes, yes, and yes, but there are lots more. Let's take a minute and write a list in your notebooks. <laughs> Guys, guess what Reese calls her stuffed bunny? Mr. Snookums hugs a lot. <laughs> you were almost saved by the bell. Why did I have to pick such an embarrassing name for that rabbit? At least the note didn't land on Mr. Manzano's desk. Now that would have been a disaster. Miss Hopper, Miss Easley, I'll see you after school. Your flight has been grounded and you're on cleanup crew. This gross gum gunk will not come off my nails. Ew, detention is bad enough, but scraping ancient gum globs from under the desks? That's going too far. So have you figured out what went wrong with their airplane? Nope, as usual, our design was flawless. Ugh, no matter how perfect they are, paper airplanes are just too unpredictable. We could just stop sending notes. You know, just wait till class is over to talk. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What if there's an emergency and I need to get a message to you ASAP? Stop. Super quick. What kind of emergency? Let's see. Have you forgotten last year's famous phys ed fiasco? That's what happens when you forget your gym shorts. My point is, unexpected stuff comes up, so we need a reliable way to send notes. So, speaking of unexpected stuff... Kaylee! Reese! I'm so glad you picked up. I have an air-resistible invitation for you. Join us at Confetti's annual flying machine fair. Witness the unveiling of Professor Seymour's Airship 1000. So, are you guys in? You had us at air, resistible. Presenting the Airship 1000. It's air amazing. Thank you. I could never choose favorites among my inventions, but I do confess I have a soft spot for my flying machines. I rarely get them right on the first try. But there's nothing I love more than a challenge. And when you're working with wind speed and air currents, there are challenges galore. We know a little something about that. Well, look at that. Our little dev caterpillar has transformed into a crabby butterfly. Aw, give dev a break. I'm sure there's a perfectly good explanation for the getup. My mom volunteered me to be the flying machine mascot this year. Oh, mothers, they mean so well. But I had to wear my little sister's old Halloween costume because the mascot costume went missing. Did it, um, disappear into thin air? Ha, ha, ha. Very funny. <laughs> <laughs> All aboard! The Airship 1000 is about to take its maiden voyage. Are you afraid of heights? No, not heights. Reese and I just had a, uh, well, humiliating experience with an unpredictable airborne vessel today. We're a little edgy. 
Professor, how can you be sure that once we get into the air, we won't just get blown off course? Oh, I can assure you that this airship has a set of extremely reliable controllers. The rudder controls the steering, and these bags filled with air control whether the airship goes up or down. Who knew air had such power? I've just been using it for breathing. Indeed. Since air is heavier than the helium we use to inflate the balloon, we can add air to weigh us down and let some air out to go higher. Too bad our paper airplane didn't have a controller like this. A controller? That's it! Thanks, Professor. You just solved our pesky plane problem. My pleasure. Now, how about that ride? And then Mr. Manzano unfairly gave us gum scraping duty. There isn't a nail polish on the planet that can cover up this damage. But the good news is we figured out how to solve the problem. Our airplane just needs some kind of controller so we can steer it. Or you could stop passing notes in class. Oh, these airplanes are for very important things only. Like reminding Kaylee it's read to a dog day at the library. Controls, huh? Something like this? Yes! A radio control! We can steer the plane the way Seymour steered the airship, only with radio waves instead of helium. Won't the motor and antenna weigh down the airplane? Just factor that into the design. Come on, I'll show you. finally stopped. Hey, that looks like String Cheese's exercise ball. I'm trying to design a logo for Made Wrong's special Earth Day episode. I'm doing an Earth Day project for school, but I can't find my assignment sheet. Have you seen it? Is it a folded up piece of blue paper? Yes, where is it? Your hamster has it. Bad String Cheese, how could you? Uh, give it, come on! Naughty Hammy, oh no. The project's due on Monday morning, and I haven't even started. <sighs> if only you had a super cool older sister who could help you in your time of need. Please help me, Kaylee. Fine. Oh, I knew my piles were shrinking. Kevin, watch out! The slightest touch in my junk pile will come crashing down. Remember the last avalanche? Oh, you broke your wheel, and it was just awful. Oh. Took you forever to bring me my tea. Someone's been stealing my gorgeous garbage, but who'd be dumb enough to make an enemy of me? Melvin, you've been guarding this pile night and day. You must know who's been taking my trash. Melvin, you know you've always been my favorite of all the Shredders. You are my most trusted and loyal companion, and you'd never lie to me. So please, please tell me who is responsible for this trash pile travesty of justice. Alternatively, you could choose not to tell me, and then we could talk about your new role as a charming bird feeder in my junkyard. <laughs> Your trash is our treasure? <laughs> I don't think so. My trash is my treasure. Professor Seymour! Professor Seymour! Oh, oh. I know you're the thief who's been grabbing up my trash treasures. Don't bother to deny it. I do have your treasures. <laughs> But I didn't steal it. It was given to me. Ah, uh, what? Wha? Well, that's impossible. By who? By Melvin. <gasps> it can't be. Melvin came in looking to find a present for you. Oh, he's still in huge trouble. But go on. He saw us fixing things and wanted to help. He was curious. You see, when we repair this fan, instead of getting a whole new one, it cuts down on waste. You know, I always need recycled scraps for my repairs. If you bring me plastic and metal scraps, I'll give you old magazines and junk mail to snack on. It's a win for everyone. Confetti is cleaner and greener. Melvin has a full, uh, tummy. And Professor Seymour has supplies to make and fix things. 
It is most certainly not a win for me. Mark my words, Seymour. I'll have this ramshackle wreck of a shop shut down. But first, I need to have a little chat with Melvin and find out what his favorite flavor of bird seed is. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but it can't be good for Melvin. It would be wise for Melvin to spend some time away from Frivol until she calms down. Don't worry, Uncle Seymour. I know just the place. <laughs> you should have seen Edie's face when she found that hamster chomped assignment sheet. The terror. Last minute projects can be a disaster, but sometimes that rush of adrenaline leads to some truly visionary ideas. Hey, Cammy, what's up? You look worried, panicked, freaked out? Uh, yeah. That's because I am. We've got a slight emergency on our hands. Evil Queen Frivol thinks that her prize shredder, Melvin, betrayed her by recycling stuff from her junk pile. Drama. She is none too happy right now. We need to find somewhere to keep Melvin until things calm down. So you want us to brainstorm hiding places and confetti? Not exactly in confetti. Okay, Melvin, here's the deal. In confetti, shredding's bad because it destroys the environment, which is, you know... Paper. Ah. Right, but here, shredding's good because it helps us reuse paper. And if you don't start soon, Jax is going to get super suspicious and we'll have to send you back. Whoa, look at that shredding robot go. Really impressive, but I don't get it. If you made this robot in Reese's garage, why can't you just keep it there? That is a great question. Because her dad's converting the garage into a yoga studio. And robots aren't big on yoga. All right, it can stay. Maybe it can help me with my paper mountain. The only question now is, what are we going to do with all of that paper it shredded? Shredded paper makes the best hamster cage bedding. Use a scale to weigh the paper so you're sure you have the right amount. You need about two grams of paper for each cubic inch of the cage. But string cheese likes a fluffy mattress, so we use three grams. Shredded paper also makes paper macheing super easy. And don't forget about how useful shredded paper is for composting. With enough shredded paper, you can do anything. So, we brought you all a little surprise. Voila, our Earth Day episode is up on Made Wrong. The logo's perfect. Here, Melvin, do you want a logo for lunch? <laughs> That's weird, he's always hungry. What's up, buddy? Confetti? You want to go home to confetti? But Queen Frivol and the bird feeder? Oh, good. You're with Melvin. Uncle Seymour made a deal with Queen Frivol. Since Melvin kind of took Frivol's junk without asking, Uncle Seymour is giving it back to her with two conditions. One, she keeps the junk in her own yard and doesn't pollute confetti with it. And two, she promises to be nice to Melvin. Aw, Melvin, did you hear that? And the best part is, Uncle Seymour wants Melvin to work at the fix-it shop and help sort and recycle stuff as it comes in. What do you think, mm -hmm. Melvin? <laughs> oh, 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 oh.